How to cope with a family member's cancer diagnosis. Learning that a loved one has cancer is devastating, but it's important that you remain strong so you can support them through their treatment. You will need understanding, openness, normalcy, and self-care. Step one, keep your reactions simple. Tell them you love them and that you'll help them through this. Don't admonish them to stay positive or patronize them by downplaying a dire prognosis. Step two, be prepared for personality changes. Many cancer patients go through periods of anger and withdrawal and experience mood swings. Try not to take it personally if they lash out at you. Step three, research their illness so you have a better understanding of what to expect. Encourage them to take a holistic approach to their healing by eating a healthy diet, learning ways to manage their stress, and doing whatever exercises they can manage, in addition to their medical treatment. One study showed that chemotherapy patients who combined resistance training and aerobics with relaxation techniques were likely to have less fatigue and feel better in general. Step four, look for a balance between avoiding reality and dwelling on the diagnosis. Don't be afraid to tell the cancer sufferer what you're feeling and encourage them to do the same. One study found that cancer patients and family members who bottled things up in an attempt to spare each other's feelings ended up feeling isolated. Step five, try to stick to established family routines as much as possible. A study of families living with a cancer diagnosis found that maintaining routines helped families cope with the situation. Step six, take care of yourself. Especially if you are the primary caregiver, stay connected with your friends, get loved ones to pitch in so you can get regular breaks, and eat well. Consider individual counseling, joining a support group, or seeking solace in your faith community. The best way you can help your family member is to keep yourself mentally and physically sound. Did you know, cancer patients who received massages from family members experienced a reduction in their stress, pain, fatigue, depression, and nausea. How to help prevent cancer with herbs and spices. Those tasty herbs we like to sprinkle on our favorite dishes may help prevent cancer and other illnesses. You will need rosemary, garlic, ginger, turmeric, a computer with internet access, cosmetics, and a healthy diet. Step one, gather herbs containing antioxidants and other phytochemical substances. Some of these include garlic, rosemary, saffron, ginger, and turmeric. In most cases, two teaspoons of the fresh herb will provide the same flavor as one teaspoon of dried herbs. Step two, seek out recipes that use herbs or make up a few of your own. Step three, take good care of yourself and include fruits and veggies in your diet. Sprinkle them with a little spice and you may just be a step closer to preventing cancer. Did you know, in the 17th and 18th centuries, some believed that cancer was contagious? In 1779, France's first cancer hospital was forced to relocate because of the fear of the illness spreading. How to help prevent cancer with the right exercise. Regular exercise helps with weight maintenance and maintaining a healthy weight has been linked with cancer prevention. Here are some pointers to keep in mind. You will need an active lifestyle and alternate physical activities. Step one. Know that one-third of annual cancer deaths in the U.S. can likely be attributed to poor diet and lack of exercise. Step two, recognize that the most compelling evidence linking exercise to cancer prevention involves cancers of the colon and breast. Scientists suspect that exercise also might play a role in lowering the chances of prostate, lung, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, ovarian, testicular, and uterine cancers. Step three, Understand that you should maintain a healthy weight throughout your life to reduce your risk of cancer. You can maintain a healthy weight by balancing calories consumed with physical activity levels. If you're currently overweight or obese, use diet and exercise to achieve and maintain a healthy weight. Step four, adopt a physically active lifestyle. Engage in at least 30 minutes of moderate to vigorous physical activity five or more days per week. 45 to 60 minutes is even better. When it comes to preventing cancer, all kinds of vigorous exercise are the right kind. Step five, challenge yourself by adding new activities and increasing the duration of your exercise routine. Ask your doctor or physical therapist for help in designing an exercise plan tailored to your needs. Did you know? A study conducted in 2007 by the Centers for Disease Control found that Colorado was the only state in the US with an obesity rate below 20%. How to help prevent prostate cancer. After skin cancer, prostate cancer is the most common cancer among men in the United States. Help reduce your chances of developing the disease with these tips. You will need 
healthy food, healthy exercise habits, vitamins and medication, and a physician. Step 1. Limit your intake of high-fat foods and eat more fruits and vegetables. The highest rates of prostate cancer appear in countries where people have diets high in fat. Omega-3 fatty acids, a type of fat found in fish like anchovies, sardines, salmon, and herring, is the exception. It's a healthy fat that can aid in preventing prostate cancer. Step 2. Do not drink alcohol in excess, only in moderation. Alcohol lowers your immune system and can potentially increase the risk of aggressive prostate cancer. Step 3. Lose weight, which may help prevent prostate cancer. Being obese may affect the levels of hormones that are related to prostate cancer. Step 4. Develop healthy exercise habits. Exercise increases the strength of your immune system and decreases obesity, which plays a role in cancer prevention. Step 5. Get enough vitamin D, vitamin E, and selenium. Daily doses of these can help prevent prostate cancer. Step 6. Ask your doctor about taking anti-inflammatory drugs such as aspirin. Taking aspirin or other anti-inflammatory drugs can reduce the risk of prostate cancer. Step 7. Talk to your doctor about annual screenings. Your doctor can detect abnormalities in your prostate early and potentially catch them before they develop into cancer. Keep yourself healthy and not only will you help prevent prostate cancer, but you'll get more joy out of life. Did you know? The U.S. Food and Drug Administration approved a prostate cancer vaccine in 2010. The vaccine fights advanced prostate cancer that no longer responds to hormone therapy. How to identify the causes of prostate cancer. Understanding the causes of prostate cancer means coming to grips with the risk factors for the disease. Knowing your risk factors may put your mind at ease. You will need your family history. Step 1. Know that the risk of developing prostate cancer increases with age. The disease is most common in men over 65. Prostate cancer occurs when cells in the prostate gland become abnormal, mutate, and accumulate to form a tumor that grows and invades surrounding tissue. Step 2. Understand that black men have a greater risk of developing the disease than men of other races. The reason for this is not known. Step 3. Be aware that prostate cancer runs in families. If men in your family are prone to the disease, there is an increased likelihood that you may get it as well. Step 4. Recognize that obesity increases your risk of developing advanced prostate cancer, the most difficult form of the disease to treat. So take note, this is one risk factor that you have some control over. Did you know, in 2006, 28,373 men in the United States died of prostate cancer? How to prevent cancer by avoiding carcinogens. You can reduce your risk for cancer by avoiding carcinogens. Here are some ways. You will need non-styrene food packaging and organic foods. Step one, avoid foam food packaging which contains styrene that can be transferred to food inside. Animal studies have shown a link to cancer. Styrene was found in the urine samples of 87% of people tested in a Center for Disease Control and Prevention study. Step two, avoid taking your clothes to dry cleaners that use tetrachloroethylene as a cleaning compound. The agent has been found to cause liver cancer and leukemia in rats. Alternative dry cleaning compounds include silicone and hydrocarbon-based solvents. Step three, limit your exposure to titanium dioxide, which is found in cosmetics, paints, paper, and plastics. Animal studies have confirmed the compound's carcinogenicity. The jury is still out on whether titanium dioxide nanoparticles found in cosmetics can be absorbed by the skin, and if they are absorbed, what their effects would be. Step four, avoid diesel exhaust. These fumes have been linked to cancer in animal studies. Since diesel fumes are practically everywhere, your best bet for avoiding them is probably to move to an unpopulated tropical island. Step five, reduce your exposure to aromatic hydrocarbons by limiting your consumption of smoked, barbecued, or burnt foods. Step six, consider eating more organic foods. Organic foods contain lower concentrations of problematic food additives. Now you can enjoy a long, healthy life. Did you know? Approximately 100 new food and color additive petitions are submitted to the U.S. Food and Drug Administration annually. Additives cannot be approved if they are found to cause cancer in humans or animals. How to understand cell phone radiation and cancer risk. Alarmed by news reports that cell phones could possibly cause brain tumors? Here's what we know so far. 
you will need the facts and precautions. Step 1. Know what cell phone radiation is. Cell phones emit radio frequency energy, a form of non-ionizing radiation. Ionizing radiation, the kind produced by X-ray machines, has been linked to cancer. Non-ionizing radiation has not. Step 2. Understand the classification of the International Agency for Research on Cancer, which evaluates environmental and lifestyle factors for possible links to cancer. The IARC classifies cell phones as a possible carcinogen, meaning it's not certain whether they pose a cancer risk. The International Agency for Research on Cancer also lists coffee and pickled vegetables as possible carcinogens. Step 3. Understand why the IARC classification is confusing. Some studies into possible links between cell phones and cancer have found a higher risk of brain tumors, while others have found a lower risk. Some scientists point out that cell phones have been in use for years with no subsequent increase in brain tumors. Others say there hasn't been enough time to determine the effect on younger generations who began using cell phones in childhood. Step 4. Play it safe by reducing your exposure to cell phone radiation. Use speakerphone or a wired earpiece. A ferrite bead will lower your exposure even further. Also, limit the time you're on your cell phone while walking and when you have a weak signal. Cell phones emit more radiation when they're in motion or far away from a cell tower. Avoid wireless earpieces, which emit radiation right at your ear, albeit at lower levels. Step 5. Stay tuned to new research. The jury is still out on cell phone radiation and cancer risk. In the meantime, it wouldn't hurt to talk less on your cell phone and send text messages whenever possible. Did you know? 85% of Americans 18 and older own a cell phone.